That next game will be the Cleveland Browns at Baltimore Ravens. Cleveland Browns going into Baltimore as six and a half point underdogs. Obviously, this season has not gone the way the Browns expected, but the Ravens also didn't have the best game last week, losing to the New York Giants in the comeback effort by Brian DeBall's team. And Lamar kind of pooping the bed, if I can still say that about Lamar Jackson without it being taken too literally. Patrick, we'll start with you. Again, it's landed on you. This was not forced as an Ohioan expert. Ohioan? Ohioanite? <laughs> Hi, and I, uh, yeah, so long as you're getting the hook of us six and a half here, this is going to be a small unit play on Cleveland for me, mainly just because this offense is still legit. Baltimore's weakness right now defensively is stopping the run. So if Chubb can return to the level that he's been at last week against that Patriots run defense, it was a little bit of an outlier for the season. It was the first time he didn't hit his over. If he just returns to the expectation for what he's been, then this offense is still capable of putting up 24 to 28 points against this Baltimore defense here. And if you extrapolate that out, that's calling on Baltimore to score 31 to 35 points to cover here, which they can certainly do against this Cleveland defense, which also struggles against the run, and that's what Baltimore wants to do. But it's still a lot for, for a divisional matchup here. Both these teams are, are pretty similar to each other, more similar than we probably care to admit. Baltimore is just more more well-coached and, and better rounded on defense. Um yeah, I mean, we can get to it later, but I, I also like the over in this game. Um, you can you can tease Cleveland parlay with the over, too. I don't think that's that's horrible value here because neither of these teams can can really stop the run. Both teams run the ball well. Um, but, yeah, as, as far as the game goes, it's it's going to be a small, small play on Cleveland for me. Yeah, I know Jacob hates teasing overs. And, again, we, we're going to have to get in the conversation for, like, the fifth time. But I yeah, do I think know, there's about he's, he's Cleveland and then – or just take an alternate on Cleveland and then parlay that with the over. Yeah, something like that. I, I kind of I tend to agree, actually, though, because I do think Cleveland plus anything over 10 and a half is a great bet. And I do think if you can get over 41 or 42 at a decent number with that parlayed, like you're in a pretty good spot. I really just want it to be covered in the 24 to 25. So just getting over 44 and a half is probably good enough for me if we're, we're talking that. But anyway, Jacob, over to you. Yeah, this is a spot where I actually don't mind doing the teaser on the over because I really just like the over in the game. Um and if you want to put it with the Browns, like, I think that's fine. I, I, I think generally, like, it's, it's a bad EV, but this is a spot where I wouldn't mind it. But I'll get into my analysis. And the Browns are first in early down run play efficiency by a massive margin. And the Ravens are 24th in run defense DVOA. Um, the Browns are eighth in overall defense, offensive DVOA and sixth in EPA, which is still shocking to me with a quarterback in Jacoby Brissett. But... Their run game has just been so efficient, and the Ravens have also struggled to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. They rank 25th in pressure rate, and the Browns' offensive line is elite, as we know. So I think you're going to see a fairly efficient Browns offense where um, they're going to be able to run the ball super effectively, and then when they do pass, I think Brissett will have time in the pocket to do what he wants to do, albeit against a pretty solid Ravens secondary. But again, I think the run game is going to be the emphasis. And then the Ravens' offense is also elite. Um Third in yards per play, third in DVOA, fourth in EPA. So picking, they're going to pick apart a really weak Browns defense that just continues to struggle week after week, uh, 31st in EPA overall. So I think the over is my favorite play from this game. But I'm just going to take the value on the Browns as well. I think at six and a half, it's just a high number for, like Patrick said, two fairly similar teams and like a divisional matchup where I, I wouldn't be shocked if it goes either way. Um, I do like this Ravens team to win, but – Maybe they do it by a field goal or four points or something like that. I think they'd probably stay with the number. Pass it over to you, Jason. Yep, in agreement with everybody here. Um, this is too big of a number in a, a divisional game that I just don't think there's actually that much separation in right now, um, especially with the injuries that popped up on the Ravens side with Mark Andrews um, and J.K. Dobbins. Not that Dobbins has been a huge factor, but um, it's definitely another body that's out. We saw Kenny and Drake rip off a couple big runs. Really, where you can kind of beat Cleveland is like you can run on them, obviously, as we've seen, but you can also beat them through the air. And I don't think the Ravens are going to have a ton of success through the air, um, just with the kind of guys that, that are in there, because Bateman is also dealing with an injury. And then for me, a lot of this comes down to just when you kind of watch the Ravens in terms of just what they do defensively against the run, like the metrics all back it up, but like they kind of just look lost. And Patrick Queen, especially, I'm kind of just watching him run around out there with like a chicken with his head cut off and he doesn't really know what he's doing. And this has been for two seasons in a row. Um, 
So I, I actually just don't know if he's going to figure it out at this point. And I think that's kind of a big deal, especially at the second level, which Chubb and, and Kareem Hunt are going to get to plenty of times in this game. Um, they're just going to be able to control the clock. Like Cleveland's been able to do this. Um, I, I've liked what they've been able to do most of the season. Like they've blown a couple of games. They've, they've had some games that they should have won. And yeah, six and a half just feels like a lot. Like I'm kind of actually baffled now that the Ravens got this number once again against a better team. As we saw, even they had the same number against the Giants last week. So it's it just feels a little bit misleading as far as how sportsbooks are valuing the Ravens right now. I do just want to add quickly. Uh, it looks like Rashad Bateman practiced today for the second straight day, and while his return would potentially make things harder for the Browns defense, I think it's just a further boost to the over. Um, so I, if Mark Andrews is out and Rashad Bateman's playing, I think I still would take the over. So, yeah, I really wanted to take the Browns money line. I even added it right here, but I did not see that White Teller still did not play. And so re- the reason is you guys already said all the reasons why the Browns plus six and a half. And I'm sticking to that. Mark Andrews looking like he's going to be out for this game is so massive. I could care less if Bateman's back if Andrews isn't there. Because I think Lamar Jackson at times will look lost in this game without Mark Andrews being that big target right there. Now, maybe likely really does step up um, and it's more of the scheme. But I do have a lot of faith in Andrews just being a great tight end and a great receiver. J.K. Dobbins not being in this game, not the hugest deal. Kenyon Drake looked okay, but eh. Marcus Peters being out, I think, is just another. Like, there's a lot going against the Ravens in this one, and I pl- I think plus two thirty five is almost a value. But I'm gonna wait just to see kind of what happens with these injuries. So maybe I'll comment down below. I'm not gonna make an official play right now, but I do love the Browns game a plus six and a half with that hook is, I think, fantastic value, and. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are on the over. I'm not making an official play, but I definitely lean that way. I think that's a clear way to get value. And like Patrick said, maybe even the teaser is something to do. So back to you, Patrick, for player props. Yeah, no real player props. Um, I do like the over in this game. What One kind of interesting, more of like a philosophical question, I guess, about this game, but I, I don't really know what it is about both of these teams where – neither team can really close out close games. And I look at it last season, I just kind of chalked it up to to end of game, bad luck stuff that would, that would progress this season wouldn't necessarily be the case, but we're going on two years now of both of these teams being on the wrong side of really close games over and over again. I don't know if you want to chalk it up to the run dominant scheme, but I don't know. It's just kind of a weird thing about both these teams that in my analysis, I, it, I struggle to figure it out. Yeah, I'll, uh, back to the player props, I will be on probably running back overs and, and just the overs in general in this game. Jacob? Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because I was going to say, if you're not completely sold on the Browns at, under a touchdown, you can wait, and if the Ravens have a halftime lead, you might even get, like, 9, 10 points on the spread, which I think would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> the Ravens have really sucked in the second half, uh, closing out these games, so... Maybe that gets better, maybe it doesn't, but I'm willing to bet on it not getting better for the time being. Um, for player props, I'm going to go back to the well. My favorite player prop is Nick Chubb. Longest run over 16 and a half, which it's been listed at 18 and a half or 19 and a half in those places. Um, I would shop around a little bit, see if you can get a better value on our lineups player prop page. But uh, we're doing draft things for this, so I'll lock it in at 16 and a half. I think he said that in every game for a long time. I didn't write down the actual number, but he barely missed the 18 and a half prop last week. He finished with a long carry of 18, even though the Patriots really good defense was just completely loading the box and forcing them to throw downfield. The Ravens do not have the same capability against the run as the Patriots did. And I just, I don't see them slowing down Chubb from getting this number over. Yeah. So we're on DraftKings, So I'm going to just stick with it, but you can get Nick Chubb over 16 half at minus 115 on Betham GM. I just took a look. I, I don't understand why we can't get 17 and a half at plus money or minus 105. I, I would just take that, but I'm with you there, Jacob. Jason, any player props? Uh, no, anytime touchdown scores are out right now, but I'd look at Kareem Hunt. Um, Jacob, you can bring up your red zone touches stat here as well, so I'll pass it to you after. But it, this is more just because of value. Like Chubb is going to continuously come in at minus 140, minus 150 these days. And Kareem Hunt, you can tend to probably get around plus 130. So this is just more of a value play for, for similar touches in an offense that we you know, both see them use plenty of running backs in their schemes in the red zone. Jason, you weren't on the call beforehand, but I got Hunt TD score anytime on Caesars at plus one ninety five. Oh, a yeah, stupid drop me in, though. Yeah, 
yeah, half unit on that all day. Like, Jacob, go ahead, say your stat because I can't remember it exact. Um, no, it was just that both Nick Chubb and Cream Hunt are top three at the running back position in red zone touches, which. I mean, it shows you, like, the, the Browns have done a great job of sustaining drives and getting into the red zone, and they're going to go to their running backs when they're down there. So the value discrepancy between Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt just continues to be overemphasized in the sports books. Yeah, it's basically a 50 fit. Like, the only thing I give Nick Chubb is he's a little bit better runner, so you're talking about, like, an explosive play maybe that he's got a higher chance. But it's not the difference between plus 195 and minus 110 difference. Like, it should be... Maybe Nick Chubb minus 110, Kareem Hunt plus 120. But we just keep getting value on it. I'm going to keep going back to it. So Jacob, Jason, and I are all on that. And then I wanted to touch on Lamar Jackson rushing over because I think without Dobbins, they're going to lean on Lamar to rush the football. And I feel like that's how you're going to beat the Browns defense. Again, I also think without Mark Andrews, there'll be a couple times where Lamar maybe would normally just stay looking downfield that he may take off and run. I could see him running for 100 plus in this game, but we'll see where this line comes in at, see if it's a value, and I'll leave a comment down below. It's probably something I'll be placing another half unit on. Anything else? Good to wrap up. All right, so all four of us are on the Browns at plus six and a half. I'm on a half unit, Patrick, quarter unit. Jacob Jason, full unit. Patrick has a full unit on the over. Jacob has a full unit on the over. Jacob and myself both have a full unit on Nick Chubb, longest run over 16 and a half. Myself, Jacob, and Jason all have Cream Hunt anytime score at plus 195 half unit. You can find that on Caesars. We'll see what it comes in at on DraftKings. And then myself, I like Lamar Jackson on over on rushing. Depending on where the line comes in, I'll comment down below. It's going to wrap it up for this one. Let us move on to the next game.